for me, deer hunting begins in July. Diving into the woods with the ticks and the chiggers and the mosquitoes. In Alabama, the temperature usually around 100 degrees and humidity like you wouldn't even believe. By the end of July and the beginning of August, the deer have formed enough antlers to start to locate a specific target. And this is the style of deer hunting that I enjoy. I try to find specific deer to go after. This year, a deer started to show up on camera that was very unique. Non-typical deer like I've never seen before. In velvet, he was consistent, like usual, with most mature deer. As soon as the deer season approached in mid-October and they shed their velvet, the deer became more scarce, only making appearances at night. And for this particular deer, I located him a mile in. So with 100 pounds of corn on my back, every two weeks, I would trek through the woods, reestablish the bait, and then I slowly moved the bait site closer in to an easier entrance point. Four different times I moved the bait closer and closer to an easier spot for me to hunt. And by the time the deer season opened on October 15th, Groot would not show consistently, if at all, on camera. The bucks had broken apart, and now we're traveling alone. By the first week in November, he started to show consistently late in the evenings with a few hours of daylight left. Three days in a row, he appeared in front of the camera, and I decided to go in for the first hunt of the year on November 15th, a month after the season opened. I'd allowed enough time for the deer to become comfortable in the area, to make sure he was daylighting consistently, and on a good wind, I went in the woods for my first sit. left this spot alone and haven't put any pressure on him so hopefully he'll come back in here. He's been showing up on camera at night but the conditions are such that he might just come in here. I don't know. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Last light was at 5.15 p.m. I sat with not much activity until 4.45 p.m. with about 30 minutes of legal daylight left. I glanced up and noticed a very familiar rack. He was coming directly to my stand, but the problem was I'd come in earlier that afternoon to freshen up the bait and set my stand for my sticks. So when the deer came in about 10 yards away from where I needed him to be to get a good shot, he froze solid for what seemed like an eternity. He knew something was wrong and was decided to leave the area. With a few minutes of legal daylight left, he passed through a small window of opportunity I had to take a shot.
low light. I took a chance on what I thought could be my one and only opportunity on this deer. about 32 yards I let the arrow go I stood right here for like 30 minutes and where, where I messed up is so when I set when I set the saddle up I came in the same day and hunted that day and I decided to put a little feed out and that's where I messed up because the deer came 10 yards short of the feed and could smell my ground scent and would not move. He sat here for 30 minutes, just smelling and just didn't move. And then when he finally moved, he started to leave. He went this way. He kind of knows the end of this tree. And then he got, he came into a window for me. So it's out here by this. I see my arrow. Looks clean, brother. Which is good. That's what we want, right? Yeah. Looks clean. Oh yeah, dude. Good. Clean. So if he was standing here, I had to have gone right over the top of him, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's get out of here then. Make sure. There's no, so this is where the arrow was. Right there. Now let's just make sure. All right. Well, found the arrow, we cut a vine. It's a, the deer was standing at probably about 30, which is what I, had him at uh it was last few minutes of light so little things hanging out dangling down you just can't see everything and can't always be a perfect setup i mean he was broadside I mean, he was leaving for sure and uh took a shot i felt good about but anyway can't control all the elements sometimes so but we found an arrow, clean as could be, got out of there quick, didn't search around too much last night, didn't search around too much today. He'll be back. He'll be back. He'll be back, so. it's great. All right. First encounter, we'll get him. Here we go. After this encounter, he disappeared from the cameras in any kind of daylight or legal hours. He was showing up on camera only at night and then had started to move to another location nearly a mile and a half away, only moving at night Groot started to make his appearances a little bit closer and closer to the daylight hours and then vanished from my cameras altogether. On December 22nd, while on vacation with my family at the beach for Christmas, I got a message that nobody wants to get. Groot was dead, killed nearly a half a mile away from where I'd been seeing him on camera by a hunter who lives in the area. Although I was heartbroken, I was also happy for the hunter who had the opportunity to harvest him talked to him on the phone and he told me it was the largest deer he'd ever harvested in his life and he was extremely excited so I put my own selfish ambitions away and I celebrated with another hunter this is hunting sometimes it doesn't work out the way we want it to with that story coming to an end I turn my focus is on a large mature buck that is just now starting the daylight with some consistency and hopefully if I play my cards right and I'm patient and things work out Get a little bit of luck and a little bit of God's blessing, I'll be able to bring that story a happy conclusion.